This is the CIA's sacred secret, instant third eye activation. This is the military and CIA's most advanced secrets for third eye activation to achieve superhuman capabilities. This is a multi-part series on some of the wildest research I have ever done directly from the CIA.gov's declassified papers. One time we had a, a small plane go down somewhere in Africa and we were not able to find it by surveillance. So the director of the CIA heard about a woman in California that uh, was a medium or something. I don't know the title for her. And she gave him the latitude and longitude of the plane's whereabouts. We located the plane where she said it was. And that's the only time that I have ever experienced something that was inexplicable while I was present. Okay, believe it or not, that is actually the president of the United States, Jimmy Carter, discussing what essentially became the United States Third Eye Spies, also known as a formerly top secret program called Project Stargate, which was later declassified with some 12 million pages of records from research that they did in conjunction with Stanford University Research Institute. Now, in these experiments, psychics, which the CIA didn't like that word, so they called them remote viewers, had taken a wide array of military operations, including locating hostages kidnapped by terrorist groups, tracing the path of fugitives around the world and with you in the United States. Now, the roots of Project Stargate actually go back to 1972. The US military got reports that the Soviet Union was pouring a bunch of money into research with ESP and the ability to have people move objects with their mind. And in response, the CIA began funding its own top secret research, which was headquartered at Stanford Research Institute in Menlo Park, California. Now, believe it or not, this is all true. And everything I'm about to show you about the CIA's research into the third eye, remote viewing, and secrets of the universe is all declassified directly off the CIA.gov website. I actually used the Freedom of Information Act to request information from the CIA, and they actually sent me mail back from the CIA giving me all types of documentation. And I'm gonna give you a sneak peek of the secrets of the third eye. Now there's a fascinating documentary on this top secret experiment. It's called The Third Eye Spies. And in that documentary, they point out at one time, humanity worshiped fire. The shamans called it magic and people were actually afraid of it. Now science simply recognizes fire as another part of the natural world. And while this fear of fire is gone, the fear of the unknown, the fear of the human mind, the fear of the secrets of the universe, of psychic abilities, are still something people don't understand and are afraid of. And I'm gonna break down some of that. Now, in this first fascinating experiment, there was a series of them at Stanford Research Institute where the scientists called it, with the CIA, remote viewing, because they didn't like the word psychics. And this is a crazy reenactment of one of the experiments. And I'll play the clip in just a moment, but they had one of their subjects in a room and the head scientists drove away in a car. Their destination was sealed in an envelope and the subject didn't know. And the crazy thing is they had the subject imagine and open his third eye and use remote viewing to describe where the individuals went. Now, it's fascinating. 
He knew exactly where they were, that they were in a commercial quad building. There was this big tall building. He knew there was a fountain right in front of them, but the fountain was turned off. He even described the exact designs of the concrete that they were walking on. Here's a little clip of it. But back in the room, the subject began sketching and describing where he imagined they might be. Here was the tape recording that he made then. There must be buildings around, and this would be sort of an area enclosed of some sort, a quadrangle or a quad. And then I sort of felt that there might be a fountain around, but I didn't hear any water in it. There is a fountain. That day, it was turned off. Back in the room, the subject sketched a pattern he thought was crosswalks coming together in a circle. In fact, the courtyard is paved in this pattern. The courtyard where they were is two miles from the room where the subject was. There had been no communication between them. Now, if you thought that was crazy, this is only really the surface. In another experiment, Angela Ford was asked to help track down a former customs agent who actually ended up going on the run. And she told the story on CBS News. This is in conjunction with the CIA and their own declassified documents. I was good at finding people. I was good at locating things. Angela Ford was with Project Stargate for nine years. In a sense, were you hired as a psychic spy? Mm -hmm, I guess, yes. Her assignment? To look for missing hostages and fugitives without ever leaving this building at Fort Meade in Maryland. I was called into session, and my boss asked me, where is Charles Jordan? In 1989, Ford says she was able to psychically track down a former customs agent who had allegedly gone rogue. I said, the man is in Lowell, Wyoming, and I spelled it L-O-W-E-L-L. -L. Ford was off by a letter. It was Lovell, Wyoming. Well, when my boss went to Customs and said, we're still getting the Wyoming feeling, Customs said, as we are speaking, we are apprehending Charles Jordan 100 miles west of Lovell, Wyoming. So you were right. We were right. Now, in another example, the head Stanford physicist snuck into a forbidden lab at Stanford University using one of the test subjects who claimed he was the greatest psychic in the world and his name was Ingo Swan. And Swan actually claimed that he could move the needle of an unswayable magnetometer that was buried 30 feet below concrete in a classified design used to sniff out nuclear explosions. And it had a superconducting shelving and its whole fame was that nothing from the outside could affect the magnetism of this needle. It was designed for nuclear bombs. Not only could Ingo perfectly sketch the design of the needle, but he actually moved the needle and messed up the magnetism of it. And this is when it got pretty interesting because the CIA came knocking on the door and they were all worried, oh my gosh, are we gonna get kicked out? We just ruined this Stanford needle magnetism system. And they said, no, we don't care about that we're a little weirded out that this guy could move the needle of a superconductive needle behind nuclear explosive shelving. And the stories just keep going. Here's a clip from NBC News that proves this is real. And so maybe one of the most important things about the work done here is that it has been published in one of the most conservative and prestigious scientific journals in the world with this note. Few readers will finish without wondering for at least a moment if indeed ESP might be possible after all. What a difference that would make to us all. Jack Perkins, NBC News, Stanford Research Institute, California. Now, the CIA referred to all of these phenomenon as psychoengineerics. And in their documents, they define it as an individual who may psychically 
interact with objects, locations, organisms, or events. They said there's two main forms that they focused on in these top secret experiments. Psychokinetis, which is the mental power to move objects, and ESP or telepathy, which they said cannot be explained by known sensory means. And in these top secret documents, they went on to describe remote viewing in more detail. This is a direct quote from the CIA's documents. The acquisition and description of mental means of information blocked by ordinary perception, distance, shielding, or time. Now I have to admit, when I came across these documents, I wasn't that surprised because I've had my own experiences with this. And I'll, I'll tell you a pretty crazy story. I was really into all this stuff. And I had a mentor named Bob Proctor. And one day on my birthday, my wife and I were parked in her car looking at the ocean and I wanted Bob Proctor to call me. And so I turned on Bob Proctor's seminar and I said, uh, Ashley, we're gonna do a little experiment and we're gonna get Bob Proctor to call us. So we turned on his seminar so I could get into the energy of his voice. And I closed my eyes and I started imagining him calling me. I started imagining from my third eye that I was sending out basically like this telepathic energy to communicate with him. And then I started imagining that my phone was ringing and I stayed in this energy of a reality that didn't exist to my senses, but it existed in my own consciousness. And we stayed in this vibe for a while and then we were leaving to drive to the gym. And when we pulled the car out, none other than Bob Proctor called me. And I picked up the phone and I said, Bob, I just telepathically told you that you should call me. And he was just very matter of fact, yes. Yes, Jake, I know, how are you? What are you what's going on? And I told him the whole story and he said, that's the way the universe works. Now, one of the best ways to amplify the powers of your own mind is to actually train your subconscious. And I have a free success hypnosis. It's right there down below, jakeshypnosis.com. It's my free success hypnosis to start to reprogram your subconscious mind. Because the only reason this stuff sounds crazy to us is because we're conditioned to believe in so many limits of our mind that are really just illusions. And you can use my free success hypnosis to start to tap into those superhuman qualities and capabilities. It's jakeshypnosis.com. It's pinned to the comments and in the description right there down below. Now I could go on and on and on with all these stories from these documents. And if you want to see more, give me a comment down below that says, I love this video more, please. And here's how I want to end it. I want you to do your own thought experiment. I want you to pick a singular intention whether it's to send a telepathic message to someone, whether it's to get information about the future. And I want you to start to practice to use these powers of your own mind. The easiest way to do this is to turn on my hypnosis, close your eyes, and start to imagine the energy at the points between your third eyes. This is where superhuman capabilities lie and start small. Maybe see if you can get someone to call you. Maybe see if you can get an answer to a problem that you're facing. See if you can tap in to non-sensory information to get you the answers that you're looking for. The most important thing is to suspend your disbelief. What if everything you knew about reality was wrong? What if all of your seemingly real limitations in your own mind we're just fabricated stories that we've inherited because they don't want us to know how powerful we are. So comment down below, suspend my disbelief. If you wanna see more, let me know. Hit the like button on this video, subscribe, bell notification, check out my free success hypnosis. I hope you enjoy today's video. Here's another one I think you're gonna like as well. You can click here to watch it.